Hello and welcome to another episode of Baggers Chat. As always, I'm joined by Pato and Daffy. Not the result we expected, boys. Um, how have you taken the loss, Pato? Yeah, no good, was it? Um, I think it's a little bit different to a reality check. I think it's more just a, um, just, I think it's just a kind of a heart, heart stop and just a knife straight to the heart, as Daffy said before, um, before he started recording. I just think um, it was more just, uh, I mean, they're like they're not very high on the ladder. Um, they're not fighting for a spot, like a final spot. They're not fighting for anything really. They're kind of just fighting for their own respect, really. And um, we were simply outbeaten by a team that was very, very low uh, during the year. Um, and they kind of looked look like the final side that was trying to get the top eight spot. But um, yeah, other than that, that that's a, I would say reality check, but also I don't know if it's a reality check in a way because um, it's just yeah, it's uh, flattening really. I think it's the worst loss by the season by a mile. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely the worst loss. I would agree with that. I think it's our equal lowest score as well. Um, against Geelong, we have the same, but <laughs> Geelong's a different team to Adelaide. Um, yeah, what are they, third, fourth, last, whatever they were at the time, at least they're playing. I haven't really checked after it, but um, so I'm not too sure. But there, yeah, there was just, um, we'll get into the stats later, but it didn't even seem like necessarily a stats base. I guess we lost off anything in particular, which we'll get through though. Um, it was just lack of effort, effort as uh, Bossy said. They were just, um, they wanted them more, and it was just um, terrible. Ethan, you were there, mate, very close to me. Yeah, um, that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had as a Carlton supporter, just due to the expectations we have. I know everyone goes, we lost by 100 every week, but that was expected stuff. You look on the ground, and I think my mum said about th- during the third quarter, and she goes, she points to the ground, she goes, look at the fucking talent. Look at the talent on the ground. Yeah, you got absolutely. Tommy DeConney. Charlie Kerno and Harry Mackay up forward and you can't kick a fucking goal. Like, I know partly it's probably not on, you know, Charlie and that because the ball didn't fucking get there most of the time and the ball use was terrible. And But wow, hey boys, that was... That is... That hurts me and I think it probably hurts you boys a lot as well. And like you said, Pato, it's not a reality check because it's, it's been coming. It's been coming. We've been testing you know shitty quarters and then having big quarters like against west coast and you know that game could have turned into an adelaide game as well and the giants game we were pretty pitiful in the first half and got the job done luckily due to talent and uh this week we uh took that chance again and crows made us pay which was pretty yeah pretty uh i don't know what to say (laughs) yeah not much to say um of course we do remain we still haven't won it uh at Adelaide Oval, uh, we went down eight goals, seven fifty-five to 12, 12, uh, 84, So almost thirty points there. In the end, uh, we are now twelve and seven. I think still sitting seventh on the ladder. Um, so I don't think that's really changed too much recently. Um, yeah, we go through the predictions. I just went by. I don't know what it was. I think thirty points, something like that, in the end. And uh, yeah, I was nowhere near it, Ethan. Yeah, uh, I probably won't be tipping us for the rest of the year based on that performance. Um... I think I tipped us by probably 36 or something something similar to you boys. Hello, about the same way you made or? Yeah, I had the blue bags my 38. I know that you had the same, Sammy. Um, you had initially 28, but changed to 38 at the last minute because you were a bit a bit, a bit optimistic if you had the blue baggers. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, just uh, it's pretty much a pretty I mean, I don't know how how many points I won in the end. I think it was about 30 points or 29 mm-hmm. points, but um yeah, it's, it's yeah, I mean uh, it's just, it's pretty much uh, just, yeah. As Davy said, just no no other words. Yeah, absolutely. And you just sort of felt like whenever we did look to get a run on, they just sort of pegged us back and um, sort of took us back down. There's a few different, I guess, stages for mine where the game could have been taken away or it definitely changed. I think Patrick Cripps, who played fantastic, don't get me wrong, um, running into goal 30, 35 out, um, Pass the ball unless you've got someone standing by him. Sorry, to kick the goal unless you've got someone standing by themselves. He sort of was in two minds, tried to pass it on the Colonel, and it was sort of nothing kick in the end. Ethan, we had the best seats in the house for a mate. How bad was it? He was running straight towards me. I was facing him right there. I'm like, Cooper's going to keep this. We're going to roar like the fucking let all these crow bastards know. And uh, honestly, I reckon we would have taken the game away from him to kick that goal. We would have just, you know, that kind of surge we've been having this year and the way we play our footy. But 
yeah, that was a disappointing um, moment. And during the game, there was moments where we had to get it done and kick the goal. You know, there was Fisher's snap, should have been a goal. Harry Mackay, like we said, one of the worst misses I've ever seen. How? Ever seen. 10 out and he's snapping it um, or uh, bananaing it, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, just the moments in the game, man. Too many moments we failed. Yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, sort of trying, certain individuals trying to get you later, trying to run around blokes and handballing at 30 metres instead of just kicking it in, in, in board. Um, Pato, where did the game go away from us, mate? Yeah, uh, touching on Cripper, um, I think probably a bit of that was probably uh, him just worrying about if he actually did miss it. Everyone would be talking about his selfishness, um, which is probably something that we've been speaking about for like the past few years. I know that we haven't, um, but certain groups have, um, certain cult supporters have. Uh, but yeah, I think we needed him to step up. Um, if he kicked that goal, that would have been so, so massive. Um, yes, we speak about, oh, he's a, like, oh, he's in his an, an energy um, when he does kick a goal. But when, but if Cripper kicks a goal, um, you hear it at the grounds before the game. Everyone loves Cripper. They kind of just go through the players and everyone applauds so much louder for Cripper. Um, shows how much of an impact he has had when he started playing for the Carlton Footy Club. But um, we need him to kick that goal. And yes, it's just small moments, but unfortunately he's 27. Um, he's captain of the Carlton Football Club. He's the sole leader. You need to step up. You, We need you now. Our team, no one else is lifting. You need to rise this side like you did in 2019, 2018. Um, had to kick it and yeah, it was just, yeah, no good. Absolutely, yeah. I think he, yeah, he sort of did try as well like, to an extent, especially in that third quarter. But yeah, that goal yeah. or non-goal was pretty average. Um, of course, the big talking point going into the game was uh, Jack Silvani. Obviously not named, then named as sub. Comes on within about a minute, um, or definitely very quickly gets a goal. Almost had two, I think, in the end. I'm not sure how many kicked in the end. But um, and then, yeah, Cottrell got a couple. But um, did the selection, was that a bad selection, Ethan? No sauce? Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. I do not know. I think when he was dropped, we all uh, all of us kind of thought he's rested, which I thought, you know, fair enough. He's, his body's been banged up. But when we found out that he was dropped, and then I was even more pissed off that, you know, he was named as a sub, so you still bring him over. And, um, like, fuck me, man. Like, what, what has he done to be dropped? I don't – like, obviously, his last month hasn't been, you know, like, his best – but it hasn't warranted dropping. Yeah. This guy provides a lot more than a lot of players, and they're not just stats-wise. He, you know, sacrifices his own game for the better of the team. He's done that for 15 weeks. He's been the ruck. He's been the and ruck. And people his performances as the ruckman. He's not a ruckman. Um, and the way he came on um, and, and made an impact, it showed – why he is in that best 22 and should for the rest of the season. Um, it could be a right if he is not playing next week. Um, sure. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, if I was Vossi, I'd be uh, writing his name in the 22 this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of very, very unhappy uh, Carlton supporters. Um, Pato, how did you see the drop? Was it more form, sorry, more structure over form with Pito coming back in? And um, yeah, how did you react to him being subman? Yeah, I reacted... A little bit differently. I was just kind of more like, yeah, very, very surprised, very shocked to see that he was actually omitted. But, I mean, Vossi's selection, the coaching staff selection this year has been phenomenal. Um, seriously, I, I reckon that is by far the biggest howler this year. Like, I mean, if we did get the win on the weekend and Sauce was the sub the whole game, we wouldn't be talking about it. But, of course, during the game when we really needed – a guy like Sauce, and um, and of course, when he came on, um, he obviously showed, and he had some redemption. I feel to show that this is why you need me on the field. This is why you need the heart and soul. Like, dude, he's a like he's a Silvani. He's a Silvani, and you have him. You don't have him on the field. Like, yes, in, but if but if he was rested, if he was omitted and stuff, I would rather him play play in the VFL and play a half in the VFL as a forward, just so he can start to get some forward back as a forward. And bring him back, maybe I don't know. But if they bring him in as a sub, what's the point? I, I, I it just, yeah. Uh, but as I said, I just don't think we would be talking about this if we did get the win. Um, but yeah, that was a absolute howler. And um, as Davy said, I just don't think if if he's not named in the best twenty-two, uh, there might not be a Carlton Football Club this weekend. 
just quickly, just quickly on the whole Sylvanian structure. And, you know, prior to that, when we found out that it was, we were all like, oh, yeah, you know, Pitto in and, you know, Sylvani out. But me personally, not enough research done by the coaching staff. It was going to be a bit of a wet game and you got three fucking tools up forward. What are we doing? That's why I probably said, you know, wait one more week, let Pitto come in against the Brisbane, lock in finals so there's no not as much pressure. And now... We're all in, we're in this position where we think we're going to lose the next three games when, you know, really we shouldn't. Um, and we should get a win in the next three, but this is a big three weeks coming up. This is huge for a football club. Really is, really is. We can't waste it because you go into next year going, can Carlton break the finals hoodoo? So it's going to be tough. Absolutely. Pato, did you have something to say, I was just about to say about Pito, but um, I think Duff mentioned it there. I just think... It, it like is maybe that's why Savani didn't play. But as you said, like maybe it was a chance because if we won that game, it would have locked ourselves into for the finals and maybe look for a top four spot. Now we're looking to keep ourselves in the eight. So maybe, I mean, it's obviously, it's obviously been working and O'Brien was playing with non, not such a Ruckman. It's not like they had two genuine Ruckman. They had O'Brien, which would have been against TDK and they would have had Silvani against Himmelberg. So yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, I just don't think we would be talking about these sort of selections after a win. But um, yeah, it's a, it's just, it's, I can't explain the frustration after that game on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Uh, we'll get into the stats in a second, but um, yeah, it was just pretty. It was almost, I want to say soft footy, but it was definitely the probably the softest footy value we especially played. Like we weren't that tough. Like with Pito coming back in, especially, you thought it'd be more so. We weren't that tough side that I've expected um, sort of week in, week out now throughout this year. But um, yeah, so it sort of came down to that. I think a lot of players made um, little errors like Plowman trying to take the man of the mark on, handballing 30 metres. Um, and then Youngie got it, stuffed it up. I think Saab was involved there somewhere, which we'll get to in a minute. They got a goal out of it. Um, yeah, obviously, we can talk about Fogarty uh, running, you know, not the most graceful footballer all the time, running past four or five blokes or whatever to to kick that goal. And just all the fucking broken tackles, which was just absolutely just pathetic. Like, why was there so many broken tackles? Like, why is that a consistent theme throughout that game? Like, why did it just happen for a little bit? Then It just seemed to always happen. I don't, I don't know why. And, um, but, yeah, where did you put that down to, Ed, the uh, broken tackles? Oh, I don't know, man. It's just a lack of hunt. We were out hunted uh, by the youngest team in the competition. We got bullied by kids. They had a, they had a crack. Um, yeah, but like you said, that Fogarty goal, that is going to run around in my head. If we make, if we miss finals, that moment, that fucking moment is going to ring in my head until next year because that is... For, you know, I would I would have been like, okay, if it was Dusty or, you know, some guy who's just a freak, but like four broken tackles, man. Like, you know, Chera was probably unlucky because, you know, Fogarty had the momentum, but the two, the first two tackles, just land it. Just yeah. like, bump him or, you know, disrupt his run. And yeah, we just weren't a team. We weren't connected on the weekend. No, absolutely. Pato, how did you read? You, you watched at home, I believe. So did you... Um... So probably a different view, I guess, on TV. But how do you view the uh, all them broken tackles, man? Yeah, um, I, I was working. So, of course, I was trying to keep um, – I was kind of watching on a live stream. But, um, yeah, I think uh, it's, it, it's it's just – this is the kind of um, game plan and the kind of Carlton that we've kind of had all year. I mean, especially for the first half of the season before the bye is pressure, tackles, one percenters, all these – Things gelling together to actually make this Carlton Football Club the, the way it is right now, the reason why we're in the top eight. And now, like, I don't know who the players were. I think it may, I don't, like, uh, who who were the players with Fogarty? Who, who was it? Who was the, uh, I don't Plowman, know, was it Zach Fisher? Plowman, Fisher? O'Brien, Chera. Uh, it, might have, it was those three and then might have been I think that was it. I think that was it, but. Yeah, but I mean, it, like they are—they are very easy tackles to make, man. Very easy tackles to make. Um, and Fogarty, yes, he's a big boy, but I mean, tackle him! Like, what's the? What is he there for, man? I, 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 being a big boy, you mean it means you're strong, but it, 
more often than not doesn't mean like Levi Catholic's a solid boy, but he doesn't move like a he's not he's not, he's not graceful. Yeah, so yeah. he's not he's not, like a, he's not you know running around and whatever. So I dig a tackle like how many blokes? Um and of course, um, we'll get on to the injury update as well. We don't have all the information being a Monday night. I haven't seen too much come through. Matt Kennedy, uh, concussion, I believe it was late in the game. So he's expected to miss, obviously. And I think Stocker also, as well. The twos, think, which lost as well. Yeah, I think also Matt Kennedy. I think it might be also a broken jaw, which is quite, like, uh, yeah. quite, quite concerning because that could that could rule him out for the year. So I'm um, sorry, yeah. sorry. That's right. No, that's right. Yeah, I saw the sign on Facebook in a group thing. I didn't really see it from anywhere else. But um, I, yeah, that doesn't sound good if that's the case. And then, so he's out obviously minimum one week. Um, and then she was 12 days. Yeah, so minimum one week. And um, then Corey Durden, shoulder, Newman, knee. And then I think Stocker in the twos, I believe. I didn't watch it, obviously, being in Adelaide. Um, uh, who also lost to Williamstown, which is mind boggling. But, um, yeah, I think he also got uh, injured as well. But um, no, nah, we'll move on to a couple of the, um, so I guess stats where we sort of lost the game. Which, as I said, like some of it's not too bad. There's some things that are very, very bad. But a lot of it was effort based, I think. But uh, yeah, 65 inside 50s to 47, like 47 inside 50s is well below um, average. Definitely what we expect in a way. Um, got enough of the ball, used it 71, percent which is actually quite surprising. 42.6 percent inside 50, which is pretty average um how so just on that ethan and also our ball movement out of d50 how did you see both them things man yeah well you know as you touched on with the 71 percent efficiency it obviously looks it looks okay like that um but fucking hell like most of it like we were so slow on the weekend like you know obviously those kicks are counted when you're kicking around the d50 and slowing it down and um, in my opinion, once we're, once the other team slows down and we look slow, it's done. It's game over because we are quick. When, we, when we're playing well, we're quick. We've got one thing, and that's on the coaches too. What can we do when the game is slow? Um, and we've failed to produce anything. And, um, yeah, it's just, oh, man, it's just really frustrating. And um, with the inside 50s, um, I think it was our lack of confidence going inside. I don't really know why we're so scared and paranoid to get it into our bigs. Because there's a few instances where, you know, I think Jack Sylvain did it a few times where he kicked it, you know, to Charlie, hit him up half forward, and then obviously Charlie to Harry, and that's how it's worked this year. And, you know, we get to about 60 and then we go, we get a bit picky and just don't go in. And obviously a few moments there where there's a handball um, after a mark. And then it's just like, man, you put it in the area these blokes need to mark the ball more times than not. And um, yeah, it's just uh, ball in hand. We were atrocious. End of story. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah, and as you sort of mentioned there, but we obviously the inside 50s are 47 and only seven resulted in actually a mark inside 50. Um, yeah, Pato, same question to you, mate. How do you read it all? And um, more importantly, uh, I'll go for the ball moving out of defensive 50. I think it was pretty ordinary as well. We just couldn't seem to actually at times get a pass. There was an invisible wall there that we couldn't seem to get it past. And um, when we did, we are too fucking scared to kick it inside 50 anyway. So, um, Pato, how did you read it? Isn't it interesting that last week we kind of spoke about, oh, God, the marks inside 50 is the opportunities. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Like, oh, we might need to work on converting, but uh, isn't it great that we're starting to get the opportunities inside 50? Nowhere on Saturday night. How could it change in a week to the youngest team in the competition. I, I, it just, it, it, you've got Harry and you've got Harry and, and Harry and Charlie and sauce. And you can talk about Harry not converting his opportunities, which is another talking point. We can spend three hours on this podcast tonight, boys, but um, you, you just get it in there, man. Just get it in there so they can fly at the fucking footy. Like you've got yeah. a guy like yeah. Murray who, uh, like, I think his name's Murray. I don't even know what his buddy's name is. His biggest no name. I think he's twenty eight. Um, he was fantastic though on the weekend. Oh, fantastic. but that's what I'm saying. Like he's a complete no name. But my word, did he hold off Harry? My word, did he hold off Charlie? Like all these guys, and like I spoke about it during the week. Brody Smith, um, he was probably a threat. And God, did he dominate? God, I think he had a thousand meters gain, which is mind blowing, man. Um, but it's just. I think overall, it is the work rate from this team that is 16th to a team that's seventh. Like what? Like what's it? It should be the reverse, man. 
There should be a team that they're trying to play for a number one pick so they can get an easy, like easy player next year to it, it's no words. None, none at all. None. Love the overuse of the word man tonight from Pat. That's good. I like it. Um, <laughs> do we, uh, I was going to like, wait this till the end, but we'll go right now real quick. Um, there's a realistic question. I asked it a few weeks ago and Ethan was giving me nothing. He was like, it's not even a question. Uh, don't be so stupid. Do we make finals, Ethan? Yeah. We'll find a way. Um, we need to we'll look at any other results. Obviously, other results will help. Um, but win one fucking game. Out of three, we've got Brizzy, Melbourne, and Collingham. Why can't we do it? Yeah. They're all um, they're all top four sides. They're all winnable, though, in my opinion. Seriously, if we get going for one game, why not? Um, me personally, of of uh, of got us losing the next two, and then and then beating the Pies <laughs> last round, um, which will be a fucking nail biter, I reckon. Um, I'm already nervous for it. I'm nervous for this week. I'm nervous for the next three weeks, but you got to back them in. It's going to be tough with personnel out this week, though. Absolutely. I did call it actually about a month ago. I'm not sure if you remember. I did say, I hope it doesn't get to that position, but we could be playing playing Collingwood last round to make, I was hoping it was to make the top four, but this could realistically be to make the top eight. Pato, do we make the top eight? Well, now it's the reverse. It might be pies to be on top of the ladder and also make the eight. But um, no, I, I, I don't. I that was our chance to make the eight. That was our chance to make it um, easy. Um, and now with my word, just classic Carlton giving their supporters uh, very, very hard, just just heart attacks really um, to kind of fall over the line. Um, I just, I just want, I just want to get there, man. I just want. I mean, I've said it again. I just want to get there. I just want to get there. Um, this week against Brisbane, arguably the played pretty well on the weekend. Yes, they lost to Richmond, which is fucking frustrating. But um, I think other than that, um, Brisbane at the Gabba, Melbourne at the G, Collingwood, who is probably imagine imagine if they're twelve in the row, twelve in a row where they get I'm to okay. us. I'm but okay. no, but imagine, imagine, imagine if it's us. We have to win to make the eight. They have to win to make the top top ladder, and we oh. win. Come on, come on now, come on now, Pato. Either way, it's going to be a huge game. Tickets go on sale uh, tomorrow. I'll say today because by the time this episode goes out, it'll be, they'll be on sale. So um, yeah. get the tickets and um, yeah, look, I think we'll make finals. I think we do get one. I would be a lot more confident if we played Brisbane at the Ga- sorry, the Ga- at the G because they just cannot stand <laughs> to uh, play football. Now. I'm not sure what the issue actually is, but um, but uh, yeah. So we're going to the hitouts with Pito going back. We called it. We expected to actually realistically win the hitouts, which we did. Um, it's, uh, our average is 27. We had 44 hitouts uh, and won that by eight. So we got enough clearances. Um, it's all pretty equal. We had a lot more stoppage clearances than they did. But, um, yeah, it was all to no avail. And uh, we'll go into the next one. So just possession of the ball it's not, doesn't look the worst. The, the big thing, I think, is the 89 turnovers. It's just, yeah, not good enough. We, we said uh, decision-making was terrible. Um, contested possessions was actually pretty average too. It is slightly below average, but um, they had 155 contested possessions. We had 141. Um, but yeah, that 89 turnovers is yeah. absolutely woeful, which just goes down, which makes it staggering that we um, have 89 turnovers and still apparently use the ball at 71%, but um, or whatever. But yeah, 89 turnovers is a ridiculous pad. I was in the mate. Is that more down to the pressure from Adelaide, you think, Sam? Oh, oh. They did lay some pressure, but um, wow. I think sometimes, like with some of them, with some of it, like Gov's one. We're not singling out him, but like he had no one around him. He was just a missed kick in front of, like, I think it was just, like sort of D50 there. It was just a missed kick. Like, some of them were just missed kicks, but look, they were pretty hungry, in my opinion. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, what's your other teammate? Because obviously, you boys would have more of an idea, but um, just Sam Doherty, man. I don't want to single him out. You're a leader. You're a former captain. Yes, he's been through tough stuff. A lot of people say, yeah, you don't want to single out this guy because he's been through tough stuff. He's an AFL footballer. This guy's meant to be an all Australian full, like half backer. He would be the first one to say, oh, I need to lift. Sam Doherty, you need a lift. Like you're a leader. You are, everyone sees him to be a captain. Like, yes, he's uh, like, yes, he's not known as a captain anymore, but he's still a big, big, big part of this leadership group and this growth with the Carlton Football Club. Um, yeah, just, and Walshy, like, 
God, like you don't want to put pressure on a 21 year old or 22 year old. I don't even know how old he is, but um, yeah, just other than that, uh, just very, very crucial areas that um, crucial stages of the, of the match, really. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Same question to you, Ethan. Um, just on the turnovers, 89 to 77, and then as Pato said, is that um, just pressure related, or we were just usable just terribly? I think we put ourselves under pressure. So um, you know, there was so many times where. You know, we'd give that one extra handball and you put your teammate under pressure. And that obviously, you know, then Adelaide pounce on that bloke or whatever. But, um, you know, there's just so many times on the weekend where, you know, like they're kicking at blokes who aren't facing the right way or kicking at blokes, uh, like kicking off one step. What's up with that shit? You mark yeah, the ball. Yeah. You know, in, in local football, you get taught, mark the fucking ball, get off your mark kick the fucking ball or hand it off. We didn't do a lot of a handball. What were handball numbers? Um, obviously, 166. Still, yeah, that's not enough. Um, I, th- I just think we was just kicked down the line. It was very, very T2021 football. It was because we were slow and we went down the line and we didn't cut angles. And when we tried to cut angles, it was the wrong time. And then we tried to do something else. And then we tried, you know, Lockie Plowman to try and dance around and do the fucking... Tango around the fucking mountain mark, <laughs> and water someone like seriously, man. But um, yeah, not good enough by our boys. Absolutely, we just weren't. Yeah, when we did sort of try and you know break lines, we just missed the kick and um, turned it over again, which uh, yeah was pretty average. Looking at our marking, our marking wasn't too bad. Uh, we had it wasn't great, so we were below in terms of our average is ninety nine. We took ninety, but they had fifty eight marks. Um, but they had more marks inside 50, which is crucial, I think. 10 marks inside 50 is 7. Um, we had slightly more contested marks, but not a lot. And, um, yeah, how did you how do you read that, Ace? Yeah, well, you look at that and you go, wow, 90 marks, 7 of them inside 50. It just shows you this, the way we played on the weekend and slow and shit and kick it around the back and switch for no reason and slow it down for some reason and lose confidence. What's with that? I don't really get why we lose confidence um, just because I feel like our, our game plan's quite good. Obviously, it needs to improve because we're not playing well enough in the back end of the year, and that's on the coaches as well. But, um, yeah, like I said before, I just think it's down to delivery inside 50, and we didn't deliver it enough to a Harry out in front. Well, we did it once, and then he ended up kicking a goal. Funny that, isn't it? But, um, you know, it's just, you know, Charlie didn't get enough opportunities he still kicked his two goals so because he's a superstar but um yeah 90 mark seven inside 50 is woeful yeah stole one stole stole a goal off tdk but uh, they still did well um Palo, look 32 less marks um and then yeah three so 32 more marks and then three less in marks inside 50 um the conversion rate there like in terms of marks in versus marks inside 50 is pretty average yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, and I just think that, yeah, that's might be down confidence. Um, might just be, but how 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 are you not confident? Like you're you're in the top eight. Um, you've been pretty good for a uh, large, large majority of the season. Um, and I don't I just don't I, I don't understand how you can't be confident with the game plan because obviously it is working because this team at this this team last year was probably they they weren't a great side and all of a sudden within like like it's just happened and it's the coaching staff obviously trying s- something new. It was a very flat, very flattening game. It was, it, but it feels like one that you, I don't know, I hope it's not like it takes like after that performance that do you hold on to that? Cause like that was so bad. Are they thinking of that next week when they go to the Gabba or do you forget about it? It's a new game. Ace. We just go up there and we beat Brisbane. Is that how we do it? Well, we haven't lost two in a row this year. I'm going to keep saying it. We have not lost two in a row this year. Obviously, it's going to be a tough task. And me personally, I think we probably might have Brizzy at the right time. It looked a bit fragile down back for mine. In that second half of that Richmond game, they looked pretty woeful. Um, and, you know, Richmond aren't a super side and they really put it on them in that second half. Um, but obviously, it's tough at the Gabba. But um, it's just more, you know, looking forward rather than looking back. You know, you look back at the good stuff. Obviously, mate, the review would be terrible. Um, the review, at, uh, imagine the people getting found out. That Fogarty goal, imagine that embarrassing that would be to watch yeah. as, a, as a group and a collective. I'm sure they've spoken to individuals and um, 
But yeah, it's you can't let it down. We have to be confident. We have to back him, really. I don't do you, is it still in the back of your mind just how pathetic that performance was when we were up at, uh, in Brisbane next week, mate, or this week? Oh, I think, I think it has to be, especially after that. Um, but yeah, like, I think it's probably good that we're kind of playing against a side that we uh, won't be favourites against because now our backs are, are against the wall. Now a lot of us are saying, oh, no, nah, Carlton's not the real deal. Carlton's not going to make finals. Carlton are going to choke again. This is actually a good time because this is when the club needs to unite once again, because we spoke about it. I mean, I know we saw about um, saw it, especially at the start of the year when not not a lot of people rated us, but we just united as a club, and it's and it probably started with Sam Doherty when he like unfortunately went down with cancer and stuff. But then he just united his troops again as a as one, and and we just charged that into this season. And you need something else like that now. And I know that obviously that's not um, as shocking as as losing a, like a game of football. But um, I think just right now, just like Vossi, you need to rip into him. They, they're grown men. You need to rip into him. And I saw a bit on the weekend, like you didn't have the Vossi halftime spray or a quarter time spray. You didn't, you didn't really see much from him. Um, and one thing is there was not much change either. There was nothing. There, like just not a lot of change with the game plan. And yes, you don't want to change things around, but if it's not working, do something about it. Like finals is on the line right now. We are, we right now we shouldn't be making finals because now we're playing in three of the top four sides. We shouldn't be there. Um, but obviously, I still back him in. Um, I think we we are good enough. We deserve it so much more than a Richmond and Doggies. We we've been better. Um, but yeah, I just this it's flattening, and I just really hope we don't take a step back. Absolutely, mate. Um, all right, we'll get we've sort of spoken about. Few these players anyway, so we'll um, just touch on them briefly. But um, Ethan, do you want to run through the uh, different parts of the ground, mate, and how we matched up? Yep. So we'll go down back. We've uh, obviously touched on a few guys, you know, Doherty and Plowman and a few others um, who just weren't good enough. And another player that wasn't good enough who, you know, we love, but not good enough. And that was Jacob Wiedering, um against Walker. Uh, I felt I felt Tex was very good, um, considering he's a prick, but... Um, the way he just pushed up the ground, he pushed a bit further up the ground on Saturday night, which I actually think is a very, very good choice by Matthew Nix. It really made us uncomfortable in our back six, um, you know, handing over to a someone else to take him higher up the ground or we just had to push higher up the ground, gets over his head. He's not the, you know, the last man in defence. So um, they kind of just took Weeders out of that D50 at some points of the game, especially when they were getting it out of their own D50. Um, what was your thoughts on on during this game on Tex Pato? I think you said it there. I just think he, he him as uh, as a whole, and yes, a lot of D, like a lot of the players down back. Yeah, uh, we're going to touch on Lewis Young, obviously, a little bit later on. But um, yeah, I think Waiters, um, he's had a few games under his belt now. He, he he should be starting to get back to his form um, earlier on in the year. And there's no bigger tests we spoke about during the week. Tex Walker's a solid player. He's been a very solid player for many years. It's not like he's a up and coming rookie. He's a very, um, he's arguably one of the best key forwards going around. So, and it just shows how good he is. Um, Tex Walker, like, yes, he didn't dominate the game, but he he, he gave Wiedering a bath. Like, I hate to say it, but I don't think Wiedering has had many baths in his uh, short career, but um, he, he absolutely had a, um, had a really shit, shit game against um, big Tex Walker. Yeah, yeah, I uh, don't think big waiters could fit in a bath. Um, Sammy, <laughs> what, what was your thoughts on Wiedering's performance? Jokes aside. Yeah, yeah right. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, I think what you said about him going to the ground and making us uncomfortable is an excellent point. It forced, instead of, I don't know, I don't know if we didn't get someone else that was, you know, half back to sort of cut across or because he's that bigger bloke, we wanted waiters to sort of just wear him like a glove and stay with him. But I think that also resulted in the ball getting out the back a lot to a keys um, or whoever uh, was there. Like they got a lot of the ball, a lot of goals that were just sort of like kicked them over all, you know, over all the heads. And then sort of they had like a couple of players just running around by themselves there and just kicking goals. And probably Ben Keys, probably the bigger one there who um, was on, well, Sadi as we'll get to. But um, yeah, that was pretty piss poor, I would have thought. Yeah, not good enough by Weeders. And another test next week, another test where he can, he can be that leader and, you know, bring us to a, 
a final spot, which is going to be huge. But we'll move on into the midfield. And obviously, we talked about this guy being a, a threat, uh, probably their own one of their only threats. They've, you know, obviously, in their midfield, they've got a pretty handy midfield, probably. Uh, well, obviously, Rory Laird here we're talking about. And, uh, you know, Ben Keyes, who had a big game as well. I thought Laird was very good. Again, I think he's had a great year. Um, just averaging great numbers and the impact he has on the ground is just not shown in the stats sheet sometimes as well. Um, he has higher numbers and his impacts even more than that. Um, and obviously we had him matched up against Walsh who had his 40. He had his 40 and you go him and Cripps had 40 and we still lost. So two of your best players have 40 and you still lose is, is a big issue. Um, for me, just quickly before I go to you, Pato, um, <clears throat> I don't think Walsh's kicking has been up to standard in the last probably month. I think it's really hurting us going forward as well. Um, for a guy who gets a lot of the a lot of the pill, and you know, obviously he's a superstar, but um, I just feel like his ball use isn't good enough. And I think he's a bit of a how many turnovers? If if Sammy, if you can quickly check, um, I think he might have had seven clangers or something like that on the weekend, um, which is just not good off his own boot. Um, but yeah, Pato, what, what was your thoughts on um, Walsh's performance? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the past three years when we've seen Walsh, we've kind of spoken about him being like, what is his ball use is something that we haven't really seen before since probably like a Chris Judd. Like, yes, he gets a lot of the footy, but he uses it well. Um, but uh, the commentators were saying a bit during the game and they were speaking about maybe that had to do with Walsh's injury last week during the game. And I hate to say it, but maybe, maybe that's uh, that maybe that's actually something like something to do with it. Like, of course, his minds. I think it's more down to his mindset and, and his confidence why he's not hitting that target. But he he just what wasn't getting the penetration, I guess, with the footy, um, and he wasn't hitting targets that we know that Walsh can do. So, yeah, but credit to Led. Um, he, he's a he's very very underrated Led. Um, I think he's probably he's probably all Australian. Maybe midfielder. Um, I think he's probably squad, but team's probably another story. But yeah, Laird's a really good player. Um, since he's moved from the half, half back back um into the midfield, I think he's been fantastic and um he's a potential captain. And um yeah, he he, he led his side um on the weekend. Yeah, um I, I completely agree, Pato. Um, I'll move on to you, Colson. What was your overall thoughts and how do you rate uh, Walsh's game? Yeah, we got 40 of it. Um, and then, yeah, he had seven turnovers, um, whereas the leader was Doc on 11, Fish with nine. Um, and then he was third with seven, tie for Gov. Um, yeah, I think our midfield, I mean, really got a bit of the ball. And Cripps was probably a shining light besides that sort of non-goal we talked about. But um, Walshy, yeah, seemed to get enough of it. But um, I don't know, as you said, he turned it over quite a bit. And I think our midfield is in clear clean. Kennedy kicked down the full a few times or um, definitely had a few very, very poor kicks. Um, and, yeah, I think our midfield as a whole was pretty average, despite getting enough of the ball. Uh, the point, like, uh, you know, Sadi even, you know, Louis, we can say he had a bath as well. Like, he got 26, I think, or something like that, which is um, a fair bit of the ball. But, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. It's didn't use it very well. We got a lot of the ball, didn't get it inside 50, and just turned it over a lot. Yeah, I agree with the midfield not clicking. I just thought, um, obviously, you can't just put it down to George being out. It was just as a as a midfield group, you probably include Fisher and, and Chera in there also. Um, I felt the first half, Chera was probably one of our best. Um, and just being able to, you know, being a bit cleaner than most of our guys and kind of kept us in it. Because we're only four down at half time and... Um, even though we weren't playing great at all, but I felt Chera, Chez was good in the first half. But um, it's talked about a lot with him. And um, how many, like, this is a question to both of you. Um, like, I was talked about, I listened to the Blues Footy Podcast today. Shout out to those boys. Um, but, you know, you look at the, the big moments in every game this year, right? When we've won, when we've lost, you know, handball chains and, you know, goals. How many has Chera been a part of? Like, in, in honestly, like, you know, you look at, you know, Cripps has had some big goals, obviously chair around one, but was that really, you know, that was just a given goal. But it just seems that he, ahead of the ball, he just doesn't have the impact and he just seems to not be clicking going forward. Pato, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think realistically, when you start to think about it, it's like hitting the nail on the head. Um, we brought him over here as a potential impact midfield that we needed. We need this player to step up like 
Yes, he has a pressure, but he should have pressure. This is how this side should be. Every single player should have pressure. There should be no more easy games anymore. If Chero isn't performing, bring in a guy like Paddy Dow from the VFL. Yes, we want to try and gel these midfielders together. This guy hasn't been on for five or six weeks, arguably the year. But yes, he's having his 27 touches. I don't know how many he had on the weekend, but he had 27 last week. At Marvel Stadium, mind you, like that's where a place where you kind of get a lot of the touches, um, a lot of the ball. And we speak about Matty Kennedy having a lot of the ball last week as well. But yeah, um, I'm not saying drop him. I, I love Chera. I love him with a passion. I'm so glad that we have it. That glad that we have him on our list. But um, yes, he's 22. He's young. But once again, these guys, these guys are grown men. Um, he has a responsibility, and he might not agree, but. He has a responsibility now wearing that jumper. When you enter that field, you are rated as a top three, top four midfield in this side. You need to step up. And he just hasn't been up to it this year. Um, and it's really unfortunate, especially with what we gave up last year. Yeah, I, I feel like he's not terrible. He's not been terrible. Um, no. Hasn't been like a Zach Williams' first year or past, yeah. um, you know, McGovern's first year or something like that. But um, it's just a little bit. I don't know, just like he just doesn't have that impact. And yeah. in games at one, he hasn't really had that impact going forward, you know, kick some goals from like 40 on the run or being that handball off to a Crips or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just feel like he hasn't been a part of that kind of our, our success and he just doesn't gel properly. And that takes time. You know, he's 22, obviously. But, yeah, Pato? I've got one thing. Would that be down to the system, you reckon, Daffy Boy? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it'd probably be a great question for Vossi, but... Yeah, it could be. I could do. Um, but I feel I like Ches. I love the way he goes about it. I don't think he's one of those guys who's gonna have 40 like a Crips. Um, he can kick on both feet. Thought he was a little bit better ball use than most guys on the on the field on the weekend. So um I feel like when we're gelling, he's playing well, but um it's just taken a while for him to really get going. And I think we've just gotta be I know everyone hates the word patience, but um we may need a bit a little bit patient with him uh sammy what are your thoughts on chess before we move on to the racks yeah i do think it comes down to a bit of a like you know, obviously hewitt's come in as well and he's a different style of player where i think uh chair is more of the classy type player um rather and so stewart don't get me wrong but like more so he's probably a bit i don't know a bit more kind of bad if you want to type it but uh like chair so he had 24 disposals 21 of them were were effective disposals so if you look yeah. at that you guys it's pretty pretty good uh, especially compared to a lot of other players but um, who had more of the ball, but had less effective disposals, uh, such as Sadi. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think since that injury, well, I don't remember what happened now, but since he came back, he's been certainly, he hasn't got to where he was prior to it. And even then, I don't think he was anything um, too special compared to, you know, Hewitt that's come in. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like you said, they're different. I think, you know, Hewitt's already that kind of, not already made, but he's kind of that guy who just gets a lot of the pill. Um, and not an accumulator, but just a more, you know, tough and I don't know. I feel Ches lays a lot of tackles as well. So, you know, we can't really underrate that as well. But we'll move on to the rucks and it's a, it's talked about a lot, uh, especially on the weekend and the whole structure and the whole fucking circus that happened on Thursday night with the selection. But um, obviously, Pitto and Teddy K came against Raleigh O'Brien and Himmelberg, who, fuck me, he is... Wow, I don't know how he's an AFL footballer, but uh, what were your thoughts on on Tommy and, and Pito's game, specifically Pito's game, um, Pato? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it was. We spoke about it a bit during the um, during the episode. I just think it wasn't really the time to um, bring in Pitt net. And mind you, I was saying we need him in, we need him in, we need him in. And uh, if he played well, we weren't even going to talk about him coming in. But um, yes, he did well in the ruck sense, but maybe that was a little bit down to the midfield, not really adjusting to where Pitt net is actually hitting it to because they've been so used to TDK kind of hitting it. But if you if you know the Pitt net's playing this week, train, train it during the week. Like, you, you should know his ruck sort of taps during the week to work on, to add it to the game plan on Saturday night. Um, so, yeah, and um, we speak about Himmelberg. Yeah, no, he's, he's, not, he's not a great footballer, but um, he, still, he still did okay um, compared to so some other players on the, um, on, on the field wearing the navy blue jumper. So, um, actually, wide jumper, wide jumper, close jumper. But, um, yeah, no, moving on. Um, I, yeah, 
Riley O'Brien, I think he's a great ruckman. Uh, but other than that, just um, just shit yeah. house, really. I thought O'Brien gave Pito a bath around the ground, in my opinion. Um, not, I'm not saying I hate Pito or anything like that, but the first game stuff sometimes needs to stop. He's had two games in the twos. He's good enough for the ones. Get it done, mate. And he didn't get it done. And finals on the line. Uh, Sammy, thoughts on Pito? It really comes back to uh, to Pito, to the selectors selecting him too early or Pito to, to the first game mentality is not good enough. But um, yeah, I I won't say he came back too early in the pure in the sense, or oh, I will probably say it. he did come back probably a bit too early. I, I, did, I did ask, do we probably need him in terms of, like, I don't know, I, I guess we thought it was a good game for him to come back in the sense that it is Adelaide. We're expected to win it. And that way we're not bringing him back in a big game like a Melbourne game or something like that. But I don't know. I don't think he he won the hit outs. He had ten hit outs to advantage, um, which is I guess okay. Which that really had like thirty four, I guess. He's expected to have a few of them to advantage, but um, yeah, uh, I don't know. He missed that. Watching him both games in the VFL, he he was just he didn't have that little like intimidating uh, like he I guess had in the VFL. Then again, he wasn't playing against you know the player that he's playing in the AFL, but the seniors. But um, yeah, I think we uh, probably wasn't the right time for him. But I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, it is tough to look in hindsight, isn't it? Um, Thursday night was supporting that decision and welcoming him back. But um, it'll be interesting selection this week. Will they will they put him back in the twos for a week or something just to get back to that original? Who knows? Because personally, oh, I think we're we're going too tall if we're playing both of them. Um, currently, just the way we played on the weekend, just did not enjoy watching that uh, three three towers up forward. Um, but for me. Uh, we'll move on, sorry, um, to Big H, who I thought was pretty bad. Um, <clears throat> more, obviously, the entries inside 50 were bad and we couldn't get into the guys, but when he had that chance to put us within a goal, oh, put us within two points and he doesn't get a drop punt from 10 metres out, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really hurt. And I thought, um, but, but specifically, I thought their defenders really tracked back well. I felt like every time the ball hit went in the air, that would be a second up, third man up, sorry. Um, and they just really, they just brought it to ground every single time. And they looked like they were ready for that task of having, you know, uh, Teddy K, Harry and Charlie up forward. But I thought Butts was fantastic considering he doesn't have the greatest uh, surname. What was your thoughts on Harry's game, Pato? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think you're yeah, absolutely spot on there. Um it just shows that Adelaide did their research during the week um, with what we, <clears throat> with how we kind of play when we kind of go inside forward 50. And um, yeah, I mean, I think Butts was fantastic. Um, and you know, it's bad when Matthew Koch was leading our, um, our, I mean, our most goals for the game. So, you know, oh, you know, that's poor, you know, you know that the forwards didn't, didn't do their role when our coach, well, I think he kicked two in a quarter. So, yeah, kind of look at it like that. Um, and in hindsight, you just just um, just shocking. Um, small forwards were nowhere. Motlop, yeah, it was solid. Um, you can't really rely too much on Motlop, um, but he still finished with one goal. Harry Mackay one. Charlie Kerno two. Charlie was okay, but still needs to be better. Um, yeah, and Soft played a half. Um, he came on and kicked one and had and had an impact. And probably was the the best forward down there. So yeah, I think actually focusing on Harry. Um, Common medalists um, starting to get back into some solid football. Um, need to keep those, man. D- drop hunt, reliable. Rely on your skill. Um, but, yeah, you just let us down there. Yeah, and, you know, obviously despite the five goals against West Coast, me personally, I don't think he's been, you know, setting the world on fire. I know, you know, as a big forward, you aren't going to kick five every week, but... Just something about, you know, he's my favourite player on the list and I've always loved Big H and just the way he goes about and the different, you know, the, the point of difference that he provides up forward for us is enormous and, um, you know, <laughs> us as supporters defend him every week and how he plays his footy, but uh, he just wasn't good enough. And Sammy, uh, final words on the matchups. ups how did, how did Harry go? Yeah, pretty average. I mean, he had, uh, you can argue he didn't, we didn't have enough inside 50s. You can argue that all your life as well. And it's definitely a valid... But at the end of the day, that shot on goal is just fucking disguised. It's just terrible. Like, you get out, you, yes, he didn't get enough of the ball, but he still did get to have, to have two shots at goal. Uh, kick one, um, just good. But um, that one, the one that he missed is an absolutely terrible miss. And I know it stands out more because he snaps it and runs it out the corner and 
chicks it with, you know, fucking two feet in the air, whatever he wants to do, which is great. But at the end of the day, you look like a bit of an idiot when it doesn't work out. And, um, yeah, that's a very bad miss for an AFL footballer. From an ex with reigning Coleman medalist, is uh, not good enough. I think our forward line was pretty, you can say, yeah, but it might have been too solid. He's sauce done okay. So he got down and kicked a goal. Cottrell, I think he tried to spark everyone up. Got two goals there in quick succession. I think he was... Pretty good. He's a bit of an electric uh, sort of player. Motlov had 22 pressure acts, which is uh, sort of pretty good. But um, yeah. yeah, other than that, I think it was pretty average. Yeah, and just with Harry's kick, um, it's just one of those moments in the game. I, oh, you, it's so annoying because I watched a bit of the just the like, like a few of the moments in the game, and Jesus Christ, you kick that goal, we're one point down or equal with them, and game on, they get a bit nervous, they crumble, we go and win the game. And we failed to do that. We just had to play 10 minutes of good fucking footy. They, they left the door open for us. They seriously did. Until the last quarter, they still did. Um, but, yeah, not good enough. Terrible loss. But we'll move back on to you, Sammy. Yeah, mate. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, well said, mate. And, um, yeah, we'll go to best on ground if you can actually find someone. Um, Pato? Oh, there's, there's not too many. Stats-wise, there might be a few. Um, but... Yeah, um, I'm. I mean, I, I'm tempted to actually go for an Adelaide player this week, boys. <laughs> no, yeah, but um, we'll go Cripper. Um, I'll go Cripper. Um, of course, 41 touches, um, six tackles, 73 percent efficiency, 21 contested possessions, which I thought was actually pretty good. Um, just under heart. I like. I mean, that's just. It's just. I. I think. Um. I mean, yes, he, that's a PB for Gripper. Um, with his disposal, I think his last was thirty nine um, against Adelaide. I think. Um, so yeah, I think. I mean, it's a PB. Um, <clears throat> but just small moments like when he has to kick that goal, um, probably takes. If if he kicks that goal, he's he's getting three Bravo votes. Um, yeah. But I, he led. He led from the front. I thought Gripper was really good. Um, starting to get back to it, that form that we were kind of seeing at the start of the year, but um. Yeah, just moments, moments when you need your captain to step up. Um, as we mentioned earlier, just um, yeah, just wasn't there. But other than that, Cripper best on ground. Yeah, Cripper for me, mate. Uh, he's... Yeah, I agree with Pato. And just touching on that moment, um, I said it after the game, obviously frustrated with that moment, but fuck, he was the only guy who willed us there. He seriously was the only he, – one of his better games of the year. And he's had a great year. Um, when you, you know when you notice a guy when you're live at the game? And you know he's had a lot of the pill, especially in that third quarter. I'm like, fuck, this guy's everywhere. Um, and, yeah, for me, 41, six tackles, 73 efficiency. Uh, he was the one that lowered his eyes to Harry and then ended up kicking the goal. So, um, fuck me. Like, really? Um, he was fantastic. And that third quarter, 16 touches, is enormous. Um, but we need people getting around him for next week. Absolutely, mate. I think he got uh, coaches votes as well or something, didn't he? I think I saw. Uh, try to stay away from anything blues related uh, on social media at the moment. And um, and yeah, that, that's about it, I think. And uh, we we'll just wanted to mention, obviously, Adam's side as well um, and the incident. Um, saying good on the Colin Footy Club for uh, looking into it and you know, not standing for it. And also good to the out for Adelaide for, um, I guess, looking into it and trying to find out who it was because it's uh, pretty fucking disgusting. And um, it was pretty close to you, eh? pretty close to us. And um, yeah, it's really not good enough. And there's no place for it in sport or in life in general. And yeah, pretty pretty average behaviour from the from the crow supporter, I would have thought. Um, but anything else to add to that, is there, boys? Yeah, yeah just just quickly on Adelaide. Um, you know, just the whole night we were, you know, which is pretty we're just pretty badly treated for a team that's flown over to support their team. We're not having really, you know, obviously you have a cheeky banner here and there, but that stuff's not good enough. And I don't think they dealt with it well enough on the night, me personally. Um, you know, there was certain, not just that person, obviously that person should have been kicked out straight away because that's disgusting behaviour. But there's just a few times where, you know, you know, they're kicking goals and they're enjoying their time, but they just rip it into us, they're abusing us. And obviously there's punch-ons around and that's just not what you want. And, you know, at the front of the cheer squad, one of the, um, there was a probably 12 year old girl ran up the stairs crying and left the stadium. So um, yeah. So just, just to the Adelaide Crows supporters is pretty disgusting and um, <laughs> hope you uh, enjoy the off season. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, before we go to you, Pato, just yeah, I was uh, obviously there as well, and uh, not all 
spitting things a few weeks ago. It's not a generalization, I think, but uh, uh, a lot of them were pretty average. I think I got cut into three fights, I think, from my from the walk back from the Adelaide Oval to the Hilton. Um, yeah, three people tried to start a fight, and um, I was keen for it, but uh, they got pulled away. Um, Pato, what do you want to say, mate? Yeah, um, don't want to spend too much on Sadi, but um, credit to him. Um, I think that post, um, when he posted on, I think it was Instagram, um, just really fantastic. Um, we saw it um, earlier on in the year with um, with Frederick from Fremantle Dockers and just like stuff, like, like small stuff like this. Like we kind of think that as a society, as a country, as a world really, um, we're kind of moving forward. But just stuff like this and you see it, across many codes um you see across many leagues or across the world even worse than this unfortunately like it can actually get worse than this um it's just disgusting just like you go there to support this your team you go there to support yeah and yes you can be pissed yeah, yes you can be annoyed but be annoyed more at the team and don't really single out certain players and speak about their culture because sadi it like as he said i think he's said it perfectly and i just hope that he can come back this week um and just and just shut all those haters up. But um, I think with Sadi, I think he spoke about how this country's kind of openly support him so well because he wants to play football. He wants to support his dream. He wants to follow his dream of kind of playing at the highest level of, of Australian rules football. And he's, um, and he's being, and he's being kind of very unfairly treated because of what he's been kind of brought up in, within his culture, something that he should be proud about. Um, and just people like that, small people. And yes, it's this one fuckwit that will say stuff like this at games, but that will stay for him for the rest of his life. And it's really unfortunate. Um, it's really, really unfortunate. And I know that there's only as much we, uh, us three can really do on this podcast. And that's just kind of raise awareness for this shit. Um, but yeah, it's just really unfortunate. And unfortunately, this fuckwit would have kind of gone home saying like, oh, yeah, mate, I was the guy who said that to Sadi. Fuck off, mate. Get a fucking life. Seriously. Um, but yeah, credit to Sadi and um, just hope that this behaviour at games can stop. Yeah, well said, mate. Um, yeah, that's uh, very, very well said. Um, all right, thank you for uh, watching or listening uh, as usual. Uh, yeah, definitely not the result we wanted or were hoping for. And uh, look, hopefully we can get a, at least another win or two for the rest of the year. And look, we need to make finals. Uh, that's the expectation still. That we still need to make fucking finals. But yeah. Um, Anything else to add, boys, before we wrap it up? No, mate. <laughs> Pato, mate, even though we lost, as always. Oh, I'm not too sure if I want to do this, boys, but we'll do it anyway. All right, boys, up the baggers. <laughs>